Well, my name's Jefferson Jewell. I'm from uh, Pamplico, South Carolina, not originally. I grew up in Merle's Inlet. I'm 29. I'm here for alcohol. I'm, I'm an alcoholic, uh, recovered alcoholic. Been heavy drinking for the last 10, 12 years of my life. When my sister first brought up this recovery center in Green Sea, South Carolina. I didn't really know what to think, honestly. It was a little nerve wracking, uh, maybe a little bit more than a little bit, which equals a lot. I, I did not imagine what I got out here and saw. Everything that I probably did picture in my head was dashed. And honestly, I think that was a good thing. I've been at Free Ministry for eight months, close to 260 days. Um, and every minute of it has meant something to me as I've worked on myself and sh was shown support from everyone that I've interacted with here. <laughs> work on the farm and and what I've done on the farm since I've been here has been roofing to heating and air to insulation to carpentry work and building decks to driving a truck and a dump trailer to grading dirt and and building mounds and I mean I I could go on there I I've done so many things since I've been here, I can't really count on two hands all I've done, but it's been awesome as a guy that's only ever been a cook. The guys I really went to for help were, were Tommy. He taught me a whole lot from being on the farm and working to being on jobs off, off the farm. Thank you for my children. I'm gonna pray for them and pray for my grandchildren. <coughs> and, uh, all our families, Lord, in Jesus' name, amen. The other Jeff on the farm, he uh, brought back to life that side of me that likes to joke around and, and cut up a little bit. Um, because somewhere around the, along the way, somewhere, I, I guess I had lost it. And the last one, I would, I would say it's Patrick, Shorty, uh, we had a we had a connection, both being cooks, trade cooks. Uh, if I could talk to Shorty right now, yeah. at, at some point, you gotta let people that love you love you, man. Like. The, I don't want to call it a pity party, but that's what it is, man. You gotta, you gotta let the walls down. The excuses have to stop. Doing. I've had better days. Did it beat your ass? Kick my ass. Yeah. Yeah. Well, good to see you. I'm glad to see you. Come on, bro. I love him to death, man. and I just, I just really want to tell him that, man, I love you. The people here love you. Love, not loved. And. You, you gotta let those people in before you can really start cleaning house. But those three guys, they, they got me through a lot of the, the days I really thought I was just done, that I wanted to say I'm good and a beer's not gonna hurt me. They, they were the guys that were like, that pulled me up and said, hold on, think about this. If, if you do that, where are you going to be?
prior to coming to free ministry, um, my thoughts on God weren't weren't really there. I didn't really think about God all that much. It was it was go to work, be a decent person, grab a fifth on the way home, and I didn't give God too much of my attention because it was it was more about I can do it myself, and that's that's where the line fell for me in religion. Being out here at the church by seven and and well before seven and starting, and and reading through the Bible was not something that I ever thought I was I was going to do. And as the Bible studies went on, I realized that reading the Bible and and the words that are in there felt like they were healing my spirit that had been broken uh, somewhere over the course of the last eight, 10, 12 years. And I, I had never experienced anything like that before. The wise are glad to be instructed, but babbling fools fall flat on their faces. I've tried to uphold with being here, you know, having an attitude and being who I've been for so long, you know, I'd always have a knee-jerk reaction to mouth off. And for eight months to stand there and listen instead of talk or give my opinion, um, I finally see where my dad's coming from when he's told me that I have an attitude. And I've, I've tried really hard, really hard to work on that. What I want to nail to the cross as I get ready to leave here is something I've really thought hard about the last three, four days. And I, I wanted it to be to keep me on the right path to hold on to my sobriety. And then I kind of felt like that wasn't really giving him anything. It felt like asking for more than, than what I should be giving. And I think what I'll be nailing to the cross is my temptations. The temptation to drink, the temptation to be complacent, the temptation to talk about somebody, the temptation to be complacent and say that's not my job, the, the temptation of taking the easy road instead of hiking up that, that rougher path that, that I know maybe God wants me to take. Jimbo's a, a teacher, my preacher, an uncle in a way sometimes, he feels like that. A motivator, he wants 110 and he's not gonna take less. And to me, that's, that's what I want. That's what I want in somebody that wants me to be better, that wants me to, to realize the drinking was nothing but a distraction from, from who I really am. Uh, he's, he's somebody that would just go through high tide for somebody. And the things he's done for me in the eight months here, through correction, uh, affirmation, and and all of the other things that come with recovery, I, I mean, he's, he's somebody that I hope to, honestly and truly hope to, to know and be able to go back to with struggles that I know I'll face in the future. Uh, boss man, Miss Lynn, um, the things you've done for me over the last eight months, I never thought anyone would do for me, honestly and truly. I've been around people for so long that have just said, you'll get it together and left it at that. And I've cried for help. I know I have in jokes and sideways glances and and acting out in, in a drunken stupor. And, and I've found two people that saw something that I had thrown away and picked it up and told me, don't let go of that, man. That's who you are, not the bottle, 
this is. And they took a pessimistic person, a conditioned pessimistic person, and helped him go back to the glass half full positive person that I know I was back in high school. Back in the days when I knew and had dreams and for some reason threw those away. And there, there, I can't thank them enough for that, man. I really can't. Because realizing that I was just drowning who I was in alcohol to be some shallower version of myself was scary and I let myself continue to do it. And having someone stand there going, this isn't you, you can do better, cause I, cause you will. It's, I've, I've never really had that kind of support. It was always, you can, do, you will, once you get your act together. If I can say this, um, if, if you do, if you do have a problem with drugs or alcohol, I mean, Free Ministries has helped me so much through a time where I just coasted through thinking that somehow, some way it would just get better. And that's not how life works. But I've found that since I've been here, sometimes you need someone to say, that's not how life works. It's a little bit rougher than that. And you need to be prepared. And being able to read the Bible and, and find God through Jimbo pushing me, I've, I've found happiness that I never thought I'd have again. I have found a work ethic that I thought I'd thrown away. I had found faith that I never thought I'd have. And I just, I, I just really, really and truly want to say thank you so much. And because I really hope that someone else comes to free ministry, maybe with my same problem, and, and maybe they watch this, maybe, and maybe they get it. And maybe they do get better. And that maybe I know through God isn't a maybe. It's a, it will, it will get better. Because with Jimbo and Miss Lynn's help, I've turned it could be into it can. And that's all I hope for down the road is maybe this will pay it forward to somebody else. That's, and again, I have, Jimbo and Miss Linda, thank, thank for that.